Hello everyone, and welcome to yet another Chainsaw Man character discussion video. Today, I'm going to be talking about the female member of the main trio, and one of the best contenders for best girl in the series. It's time to talk about the Blood Fiend power. Before I get into today's video, I of course have to mention my subscriber goal for 2021, hitting 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So, if you're already a fan of the channel and you're not subscribed, you might as well to help me reach that goal. The other thing is my Patreon. If you want to help support me and the channel directly while also getting access to reviews for solo leveling and the boxer, you can always become a patron. I have a link to that down in the description. With that out of the way, let's get on with the discussion. Power's popularity among the fan base is a very interesting thing to think about because when you sort of look at power on an objective basis, she should probably be one of the most despised characters in the series. I mean, really, think about it. She's arrogant, narcissistic, she's a liar, she's psychopathic, she's a racist, she unapologetically tries to murder the main character on multiple occasions, and yet, for some reason, we cannot help but absolutely adore and love power. Um, and I think there are a few reasons for that, one of which is obviously the charisma. My god, does power have charisma. She says that she could become, like, fucking world president or whatever, and you know what? I buy it. Power definitely has the charisma and personality to become president or prime minister. Um, I would vote for her, shit. Um, but the more serious part is that she's unapologetic about everything. She does not make any attempt to try and justify or explain away all of her bad qualities. It's just kind of out there in the open, and there's no attempt at hiding it from anyone whatsoever. Um, her... How do I put this? She's so not innocent, unabashedly, that it there's an innocence to it, almost. Um... It's, it's a very weird thing to describe. She has big gremlin energy. I guess that's the best description of it. She's like a fucking goblin, um, which is just the best. Um, now, power is very interesting in the grand scheme of things because she probably undergoes some of the greatest character development in the entire series. At the start of Chainsaw Man, she is... All of those negative personality traits I described earlier. Um, but as the story goes on and she becomes closer to Denji and Aki, I'd say we mostly see it with Denji, but we know she also cares about Aki as well. Um, she becomes, I guess, more normal, but for the most part, a better person. Um, and we already get the seeds for this development very early on. As soon as we get Power's backstory, finding out what she was doing after she became the Blood Fiend, um, how Miaoi was the first living thing that she didn't immediately kill and eat, the first living thing to ever show her any kind of love and compassion, um, and... She realizes that warm blood feels better than cold blood, blood from something dead. Um, so there is still an appreciation and care for living things to some extent. We even see that she likes other cats other than Meowy after this. Um, so already there there is a, a little part of power very early on with her character that's still very redeemable. And that's what's played upon as we go through the story. Of course, we get her training with Denji under Kishibe. Operation Super Smart is so good. Just the best. Um, we have her fighting during the Katana Man arc. Um, her declaration that she is very powerful and beautiful. Um, power... Eh, despite the name, not really that strong early on. Like, she's average, for the most part. Um, which, uh, is she the weakest of the trio? 
No, I don't think so. Nah, is she weaker than Aki? I'm really not sure. Um, maybe, I guess. Um, but power's like not all she hypes herself up to be at this part of the story. Um, now, we get big, huge development for power after the International Assassin's Arc because she gets traumatized by the Darkness Devil. Um, which, I mean, shit. Look at, look at what fucking happened. Uh, you would be traumatized as well. You would be either comatose or you would be screaming your head off 24-7 in an, in an insane asylum. Um, so power becomes terrified of the dark. Absolutely fucking mortified by shadow. Um, and Denji is there to help her through her trauma sort of just cares for her basic needs. Um, and this is very much like what happened when she first met Miaoi, where Denji is a living, breathing person who is showing her love and caring, um, which is something very interesting she also, I think, brings this up when we get her flashback with Miaoi, is that devils don't experience these things. Like, good things like this don't exist in hell. The only thing that exists in hell is fear and violence. These are the only concepts that exist among the devils in hell, and probably some other stuff like hatred, um, the desire for power, stuff like that. Well, not, not her power, but authority, might over others. Um, things like love and compassion don't exist in hell. So it's a completely foreign concept to power until she becomes a fiend, meets Miaoi, and gets to really fully experience it once she's partnered up with Denji and Aki. Um, now, there is the question of whether or not power has some kind of romantic feelings for Denji. It's really not clear. Seems like maybe she does, but at the very least, Power does care about Denji. I do think she loves him to some extent, um, whether that's romantic or otherwise. I know Makima says that uh, Power is essentially a younger sister for Denji, and Denji certainly feels that dynamic with her. Denji is not attracted to her at all. Um, which I talk about in my Denji discussion video, which you should go check out. Also, excuse the sound of a helicopter flying over my house if you were able to hear that. Um, power becomes more human the longer that she spends with Denji and Aki, um, which is, is very interesting because she's a devil at heart. Um, even though she is inhabiting a human body, it is a corpse that a devil took over. Um, and through the power of human love and compassion, she has become, I don't know, a good person, but a better person than she was. Now, of course. Power, chapter 81. How about that chapter 81? Power is uh, basically sacrificed to destroy Denji's mind by Makima. And this is uh, one of the most shocking moments in the whole series. Uh, I think that was my first Chainsaw Man review to ever really like blow up relative to the, my previous Chainsaw Man reviews. It was the talk of the town, like holy shit, the main girl of the series just got killed off without a uh, fucking moment's notice, just out of nowhere. Um, now, some of us were like, hey, maybe power survived. Then we saw chapter 82 and we were like, oh, shit. Um, but, however, power does come back when the Chainsaw Man is fighting Makima and her uh, brainwashed devil hunters and hybrids. Pachita calls upon the blood of power that is still inside Denji's body from when power let him take some of her blood, and she is restored in 
all of her glory as the Blood Devil. And in this form, power lives up to her name, because she's actually really fucking strong. Being able to control the blood inside of other people's bodies is, uh, busted. Bloodbending is kind of broken with how easy it makes killing people. Um, but this is where we finally get a real send-off for power. What happened in Chapter 81 was, like, kind of a shock value thing. Holy shit, power just died. Like, instantly. And she didn't really get any kind of send-off to her character. Here... When she's revived as the Blood Devil, this is where we get to say our fully-fledged farewell to power. In a scene that very closely mirrors Pachita saving Denji in Chapter 1, Power makes a contract with Denji that he, when this is all over, has to go back to Hell and find the Blood Devil so that he can become friends with the Blood Devil in her stead. Um, because when Power dies, and she does die at the end of this scene, she's gone. When devils or fiends die, and they're reborn in Hell, they have no recollection of their previous life. So, Power, the Blood Fiend, dies. And when the Blood Devil returns to Hell, it's, it's a blank slate. Power doesn't exist anymore. So, regardless of whatever happens in Part 2, whatever happens with the Blood Devil, it's not going to be Power. It, it Listen, the Blood Devil may end up being very similar to Power after Denji hopefully befriends it, but it's not going to be Power herself. Um, now, the fact that Power saves Denji is extremely impactful and important because first off power has always been an exceptionally selfish self-centered person helping another person to no benefit to herself would have been completely unthinkable for power earlier in the series she actively defies Makima, who we have seen has absolutely terrified her throughout the entire series, so that she can save Denji, because he means that much to her. Denji is the one who helped save Power and turn her into a better person, make her human, um, and she repays him in kind. Um, by saving him from Makima, um, and at the end, actually, is kind of responsible for him defeating Makima at the end, because the chainsaw that he uses to cut her is made out of Power's blood, and gets inside of Makima's body and stops her from healing, and Denji probably wouldn't have been able to beat Makima if it weren't for that. So Power is a real MVP who saved Denji in more ways than one in the final arc. Um, so, big props to her, and, uh, rest in peace. Unfortunately, Power, you will be dearly missed. You were one of the absolute highlights of Chainsaw Man Part 1. One of the most unique and entertaining female characters I have seen in any series, and you were an absolute pleasure to read while you were still around. So... With that, that is all I have to say today about Power. Is she the best girl? I don't know, you tell me in the comments. Do you think Power is best girl, or who is, alternatively? Anyway, that's all I've got to say for today's video. If you enjoyed, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and click that notification bell so you don't miss any of my uploads. I do a number of different Chainsaw Man videos, and I have an entire playlist full of reviews from Part 1. And of course, when part two starts up, I'll be doing reviews on that. I may even do anime episode reviews whenever that starts. Uh, so you should definitely check out my channel if you're interested in those. If you enjoy other series such as Jujutsu Kaisen, Record of Ragnarok, and Kang and Omega, I do videos in those series as well. So you should definitely check out my channel if you're interested in those. If you enjoy discussing Chainsaw Man with other people, or you just enjoy the content I produce in this channel, I highly suggest you check out my Discord server. I have a link to that down in the description. And since it's the end of the video, it's time to give a shout out to my wonderful patrons, Fuse, Neo, Dijon Redden, Anthony Chavez, Honey Mustard, Zach Rowitz, K-God, 
Chris Redfield, Scratch23, Moonshadow935, Rat, Ryzen 4K, and Artist. Thank you all very much for supporting me on Patreon. I greatly appreciate it. And if you too want to get a shout out at the end of videos or access to reviews for solo leveling and the boxer, you can always become a patron as well. There's a link to my Patreon down in the description. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys around. Take care.